Okay, so here we are with the Disk Verifier Live Disk tutorial. So first you need to have the Live Disk, which you can buy on my website at the link I will provide in the description and, and in the blog post. So you'll download the zip file, which you need to extract, um, which shouldn't take long because it's not too big. Here we go. So you're left with this ISO. So I'm going to demonstrate this in a virtual machine, but you could burn this to a CD or write it to a USB stick as well. Um, I will show you how to write it to a USB stick now. So I'm going to plug my USB stick in, which currently has part of magic on it. And now you could use Rufus to do this if you're running Windows, or you could use Disk Utility to do this if you're running Mac OS. Um, so I'm going to open GNOME Disks because I'm running Linux. Then I will select my drive, which is this one, and unmount it. And then I can do Restore Disk Image, and I will now select the disk image. Okay, so here's the disk image. Um, and it will moan about it being smaller. Your target device has to be at least this big for it to work, but almost all USB drives are going to be bigger than that. So just hit start. That's the right device. That's fine. I will enter my password. And it will begin restoring. Which in this case just means writing it to the drive, which will take about a minute, it's saying. So I'm going to fast forward this for you. Okay, so we're getting to the end here. It's about to finish restoring, and we're done. So now you can unplug that memory stick and boot your computer off it. Okay, so here we are with the Disk Verifier Live Disk tutorial. So the first thing you need is the Live Disk, which is a CD for me, or DVD, but you can also use a USB stick. So I'm gonna turn the laptop on, and press F12 repeatedly to get the boot menu. You won't see this because we're using a video capture card over HDMI, so you're not going to see anything on the screen for a little bit, just until it's um, booted up. Okay, so I'll pick the optical drive from the boot menu, and then you'll be presented with a set of options that vary from super quiet boot to fail safe to diagnostic options. So generally just do the super quiet boot. If you have any issues, try the fail safe options or the diagnostic options. But if you have any issues, please email me with the email I'll give in the video description for support or contact me on the forum, which I'll also link to. So super quiet boot is now booting. Okay, now the screen has come up. So you can see this automatic login stuff. This is just while the live disk is booting up. So then you'll go back to a black screen. You get to hear lots of weird optical drive sounds. It's a bit quicker if you boot from USB. We have a mouse. That's a good sign. And we have a desktop background, but only on one screen for some reason. Never mind. So what we've got here is GNOME Disks. And then on the other screen, we'll move it over, Disk Verifier has come up. So GNOME Disks here is so you can figure out which device is which. So as you can see, we've got the DVD drive, the file system, and the disk we want to erase, which is the SSD. So this looks a little bit different compared to on part of Magic because it has more functionality and you can add disks in GUI, meaning that you can use pre-wiped disks and verify them, whereas in part of Magic you have to wipe them and verify them in one go. So we'll add a disk. 
and then you have to key it in and you can see here that the device name is slash dev slash SDA so we'll just type that in you can put any device in here and then hit enter so it will collect information and it hasn't been able to figure out what it is but that's okay because we've got this here to tell us what it is so then you can specify your pattern in this case it's zeros and how much you want to verify I will verify 3% to make this nice and quick because it's a large disk so then all you need to do is hit start and it will begin verifying once the disk spins up there we go okay so you can see it's verifying here at 60 megabytes per second and you can see it's slowly completing you might ask why the verif verifying is a little bit slow but that's just because of the speed of the processor in this laptop in pretty much any other machine it would be quicker than that it's a very slow laptop so 3% of 250 gigabytes is going to be about 7.5 gigabytes so it's not going to take too long for it to do it I will skip I will fast forward this for you so you don't have to watch it okay we're pretty close to being finished now so as it finishes we should expect to see a green dot here to say that it verified okay Yay. So you might be wondering what happens if the verification fails. So for this I'll specify the in an incorrect pattern, like 49. Um, these are hexadecimal, so you can specify EF or something like that. If you type a letter it doesn't like, it won't let you put it in. Okay. So it also says successfully verified. So. If we specify the wrong pattern, this is what will happen. It will start, and normally it will fail immediately, but for implementation details, which I won't bore you with, in this particular case it won't fail immediately. See, it goes red, and it says failed slash aborted. So then, as the final part of the demonstration, if you abort it, this is what happens. So we'll start it. And then, let's say, you know you're going to have to turn the computer off for some reason, so you have to abort it. If you hit stop, it will go blue. So you know that you've stopped it. So if there are any that have failed and some that have aborted, you know which ones are the ones that have failed and which ones are the ones that you just stopped. So that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Um, as you can see with the live disk you can verify a disk that has been pre-wiped whereas with the powered magic module you have to wipe the disk and verify at the same time which is the advantage of having this as well so the final thing to show you is if you close disk verifier like so uh, the live disk will shut down and it will eject the optical disk and it will tell you close the tray if any and press enter or if you have a USB stick remove it and press enter and when you press enter it will reboot the system and there you go that's all there is to see with this I hope this tutorial has helped you and see you soon